Hello, and welcome back to week three of the Pro Chess League. Uh, my name is Caleb Denby. I'm, all, I'm joined, as always, by Dorsa Derek Shani. And today we're going to be going over the match between the St. Louis Archbishops and the Chicago Winds. Uh, Dorsa, yeah. what's, our, what's our roster looking like? Um, pretty strong. I Stronger than I thought it would. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I kind of <laughs> expected Flavi and Wesley to um, not play due to... Tata still, but right. well. So yeah, uh, a couple of our players, of course, playing in the Tata Steel Masters tournament. Uh, Fabiano, I think, still in the lead in that tournament. Although I didn't check back One in. Of, I think I, I think it's not the sole leader. It's the I think he's tied compared, with Ferrugia yeah. for the moment, maybe. But uh, yeah, so Fabi and Wesley both playing for us from the Tata Steel Masters tournament, as well as Lenier Dominguez will be our board two. And Benjamin Bach will be rounding out our roster on on board four. But uh, yeah, no, it's yeah, it's it's definitely not the, the easiest pairings of the world though. Uh, we're up against a very strong Chicago Wind team, uh, which features Ray Robson, Ilya Nizhnik, uh, let's see, Lazaro Bruzon Batista, and Unieski Quesada Perez. And so that's actually two of the strongest Cuban players. Yeah, and also a very four. nice pronunciation. <laughs> Uh, it was it. I, I think so. <laughs> okay. I, I think that was the correct way to say it. But yeah, shout out to that. But um, yeah, I think 
Well, the thing is, um, even though we playfully call them the Webster, uh, Chicago Websters, but I mean, I mean, it's kind of true though. They're yeah. All... Uh, so a lot of Webster players, a lot of ex-Webster players playing yeah. on the Chicago Wind team. Uh, so it's interesting to see how they. Uh, Oh, they're all working together for, for under a new name, but largely the, the same team, I think. Yeah. Of course, the Webster Windmills last year, one of the toughest contenders. We'll see how they do here today. And I think, Dorsa, the games are actually getting oh. underway, so maybe if we can pull up the board. Yeah. Uh, all the way on the left, I think. Yeah, we have yeah. three of them have started, and... Um, yeah, so three games underway, and then I think the fourth one isn't quite going just yet. But we do have Fabiano's game here against Yeah, Fabi uh, is Quesada playing. Perez. And wow, an early E5 from Fabi. So yeah, it was an um, interesting choice of opening. Uh, well, I mean, the thing with those E5s is I feel like in this specific situation, it's, um, it's very nice because it takes the center and everything, but this d5 hole, if whites had a knight on c3 and a knight on e3 and had this domination of d5, then this um, would have really scared me. But I think in this spe specific situation, um, shortly after, it could be followed with d5 from black side. Right. And... Yeah, and you, it starts to look more like an e4, e5 opening than the yeah. Sicilian. Yeah, it looks like a very nice uh, Lopez yeah, I In actually... fact, yeah, black simply just plays d6, keeping the center closed for the moment. Uh, bishop e6 might be coming soon. And then you see in the Roy Lopez sometimes, like, the knight on c6 has to move yeah. out of the way for black to play c5, but now black has, has simply I mean, I'm also a big no fan of this right g6, d6 stuff in Roy Lopez. So uh, it's it looks like a very good Roy Lopez, honestly. Uh, okay, so definitely a decent position for Fabi. Yeah, Why don't we at check least. in on some of these other games? Let's take a look at Lanier. So, Lanier is up against uh, Bruzon Batista. And it looks to be, what, an exchange French or something? S something of that nature? No, just E4, E5, but all the pawns Some up. weird Berlin. And, and open Roy, yeah. So far, everything is normal. Yeah, this one. All theory, all theory. This one doesn't look too dangerous to my eyes. Um, yeah, I think this is going to be a dead draw. I mean, um, theoretically. Right. Forward. Which is, is probably a, a favorable result for Batista, actually. But uh, we'll see if Dominguez can can try and create some complications. You know, end games are never never easy, especially in rapid yeah. chess. Um, let's take a look at So Wesley's game. Yeah, so this is actually our board three, Wesley So, up against uh, board two for Chicago, uh, Ilya Nizhnik. Uh, but of course, uh, since our top three boards are so strong, we are still largely favored in, in this matchup as well. Didn't, um, couldn't, didn't he have um, Lee Kwam last two games? Yeah, so Liam Lee is, is the notable missing uh, player from our roster today. Of course, our, our absolute strongest roster has him on board four, uh, even though he's well over 2,700. Yes. <laughs> uh, but today, uh, no Liam Lee. Instead, we have Benjamin Bach on board four. And we could actually check up on how he's doing now, Yeah, uh, well, he, they just started a little uh, later, so yeah. I wanted to see how the other boards were doing, but yeah. Yeah, looks like a perfectly reasonable opening position here uh, yeah. that he has against Ray Robson. Yeah, in our team we call this the book positions, but yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, why, why do you call him, why do you call them that? Is he known for, for this type of, yeah, of structure? Yeah, from what I know, he he likes to know a lot about theory. Right. So he's always um, checking up and doing his best to like come up with ideas and stuff yeah. and, and you actually see after e4 that the center is kind of blowing up that's yeah that's still feels like his style but so you're saying you, you expect that he knows exactly what's going on here this is something oh, yeah. he, he's looked at this is all all I, in the prep if he starts thinking for more than like 20 seconds that's where i would be like oops his prep is um either like gone or yeah, it's so not valid anymore. Maybe this H6 move is, is the move that does it. Let's hope not. I mean, H6 is nothing that special. I mean, it's kind of like 
feels like one of the only moves because it was between probably knight f6 and h6, but knight f6 there's bishop g5, right? So yeah, maybe h6 uh, is, is a pretty forced move actually. Yeah. But uh, what can white do here now to try to keep the pressure up? It looks like one of those positions where um, even if the structure is, is larger than the same, the, the white pieces are kind of just a little bit more active. Uh, things like rook d1 might be coming to, to put some, some pressure along all these pieces lined up on the d file, including the black queen. Yeah. Um, I was thinking about maybe d5. Yeah, even d e5, and then after knight takes c5, I think I think rook, e, rook d1 might be a good move there as well. Yeah. Because, like, ideally, I would want to have this bishop on c1 and c3, and that would be a monster. But I don't really see that happening anytime soon. Uh, yeah, interesting. Uh, so this one also doesn't look like... Uh, it, well, it's definitely not dangerous for, for Benjamin. Yeah, that's, but, that's uh, true. It is I, not dangerous. I think it's a position with, with very low risk. Yeah, I, I agree with that statement. Uh, and that's what, actually what we're looking for from, from Benjamin. He's kind of the only player on our team who hasn't favored against everybody. So uh, if he can just kind of maybe score two points, go, go for a level score, uh, we'll be very, very happy with, with that result. Yeah, I mean, uh, our opponent's team has like a solid, uh, all four of them are like 26 plus. So mm, I feel like for Benjamin, it's, uh, it's like more of a, um, because he's also 26 Wait, I thought he was 26.50. Never mind. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he, he's also um, like right in between the opponents. Yeah. So I feel like for him, it's more of a um, battlefield than for probably not. <laughs> right. Benjamin Box kind of playing, playing his peers here, which yeah. can, be, can be difficult. Especially with being on the slew team. Uh, I guess he's, yeah. he's playing some rivals from, from Webster yeah, today. Yeah, especially because we all like qualified for slew and webster both qualified for final four right so that'll be um, that'll be interesting too so he's already playing some of his uh opponents that he might be facing in final four yeah. um yeah and this one queen takes d5 the, the black pieces are slightly loose for kind of just a moment here i know uh, i wonder if there's there's any way to take advantage you could always play bishop takes f6 but i don't think this is really the end game you're looking for no after, the bishop on d6 could be a little um too annoying so i feel like it would be a better idea to just like keep the bishop uh, rather than get rid of it in the for the end game yeah i like a simple move like like bishop c3 Three here, or actually, I, I think bringing your rook to the center can never be wrong. So maybe rook a d one or rook f d one. Just just bringing. I mean, your you rooks can also try to exchange the queens off first and then try rook c one or rook d one. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm I'm helping the knight or or hurting the knight by bringing it to d five. But I, I don't think having these doubled b pawns is really a weakness I, no, I need to so, be mm, too worried about. Yeah, I agree with that, but I. I feel like that's rook on f1. Oh, we already have a draw. Whoa, interesting. So, yeah, that, yeah, that game that, that we saw between... Berlin. Uh, yeah, D Dominguez and Poisonous Rizon, Berlin. They, they did agree to, to a draw, which is not the most unexpected result. Although, it would have been nice to see maybe a different opening choice from, from Dominguez there, because he is uh, a, an incredibly strong board, too, and we kind of need to, to score some points against these lower boards for Webster. Yeah, but he's, he also had the black uh, pieces, and yeah. well, I mean, what can you really do with after Spanish? <laughs> <laughs> it's right. It well, you could, in answer to that, play like Fabi, play G6, <laughs> Bishop G7, and uh, and kind of go for for some craziness here. Which yeah, is this I actually like this position quite a lot. Uh, so what's actually going on though? This is this is a little crazy. Um, you see the, the white bishops on a1 and a2, not the most orthodox placement, but they, they do spy some very long diagonals. Those knights on e5 and e7, <laughs> they look so nice. <laughs> but yeah, the, the knights cover a, a lot of squares. You can maybe imagine, though, f4 might be coming in the future once uh, yeah. white plays a move like king h1, kind of prepare it a little bit. Then all of a sudden, the, the knight on e5 might not be so stable. Yeah, that's true. But at the same time, like something like f four could also um, create more weaknesses because let's say okay after rook b8 what do you want to do like king h1 sure i'll play king h1 just for the sake of argument oh well oh, no well, I'll, I'll take on really. b4 just for the sake of argument sure <laughs> but um 
I was going to say that the knight on e7 could be coming up to c6. Right. And then that uh, offer to exchange knights could be getting interesting. Uh, yeah, so instead we see knight c2. There are a lot of things uh, that are like kind of yeah, a this little is, wobbly. It's kind of a really weird placement of, of the pieces for white here. But they actually cover almost every square on the queen side. Yeah. So it's difficult to see how, how Fabi's going to try and I invade. think rook could... Rook a4 might be like a dirty trick, but yeah, sure. Rook yeah, rook a4, there's bishop b3. Yeah, and then like you could try to do like rook a7 or rook, B7, rook a6, and then I really wanted to try and take have enough tempo to play knight c6 and then the other knight to d3. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I mean, rook, rook b8 I think seems seems totally fine for, uh, for Fabi here. Yeah, I mean, black kind of has a clear plan rather than white. And we do actually yeah. see f4 now. And this knight comes into d3, like you were mentioning. The pawn on f7, seven, could that be... Um... Well, it, it's been captured, but Ouch. I think the, the problem was, rook what if bishop? we take a1 and then play rook, rook b2? Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. But I thought that might... not what Fabi does. Would that work, actually? Um. Apparently not, for some reason. Maybe there's bishop b3 in the end, um, just defending the knight on c2, and then... Then uh, the other defending. knights would come to c6, maybe? Trying to do knight a5 or yeah. something? Yeah, and then I think knight... or rook b1, maybe, for, for white, is, uh. is somehow trading off enough pieces. But uh, instead, rook f8 from Fabi is the idea, and it looks like he's just going to pick up this f4 pawn in return. Um, so I guess we're also going to see... Uh, more most likely some um, draw-ish yeah, game it's, it's unless looking, somebody blunders. It's looking pretty drawn, but uh, it's kind of a unique end game where there's more pieces on the board than pawns uh, with with all these knights and uh, okay. well now after after rook f three maybe knight f four uh, might give black some chances due to uh, him having a bishop. Uh, yeah, I really do I mean, like bishops in the end game, but. Probably it shouldn't be enough. I think, like, you, yeah, that's like you kind of have to do that. Because if you would play rook f7 earlier, rook d2, rook f4, rook d6, that right. pawn would be hanging, so. But yeah, knight, knight f4, and we, we have material equality again. Black has the bishop in exchange for a knight for white. Uh, this is the type of endgame that, that should always be a draw, but you get the feeling Fabi's going to try for a while. Yeah. yeah. No the, reason not to. The thing is, like, if the position, if there were, like, some pawns on the queen side, Fabi would have better chances because of the bishop. Right. But uh, spe especially because, like, the game is so one-sided, I mean, in one uh, side of the board. <laughs> right. Then I think, yeah, my, my prediction is this will end in a draw. You can imagine, though, some funny business where there's some sacrifice of one of the, the black knight for both of the king's side pawns and mm. trying to make a queen on that side of the board. But uh, definitely a, a, a draw, to be sure. So Yeah, let's take a look at box game. I'm a little worried about that, honestly. Ah, they would did go into these two... Um, they ended up going into this end game. Yeah, so we did just see rook d1, yeah. and now knight e4, but... Uh, and uh, Benjamin picked up this pawn, yeah, using the, defended the a file. his other pawn. And after bishop c5, I, I guess the, the placement of the white pieces are, are a little, a little bit awkward Yeah, here. that's what I was thinking. Um, so can we really defend all of our stuff? Seems difficult. I think you kind of... I feel like bishop c5, you kind of have to take it. I might, it just feels like you have to because if you don't, then bishop d4 is coming and after knight d4 there could be rook b2, rook f2. Yeah, bishop takes c5 seems very, very natural. Yeah, bishop then, c5, uh, most likely knight c5 because the knight would be attacking b3. Uh, ah, so this is an intermezzo from, uh, from Benjamin actually. Knight e1 hits the rook and forces uh, black to do something. And uh, now after rook e2, why not king f1? That's what I'm, I'm a thinking. Conceived, confused. Seems like king f1 would possibly be trapping the, the rook. I'm thinking, would king f1 something like knight f2 work? Well, I, I think you have to play rook d2. And then after rook takes no. d2, knight takes d2, king e2, knight e4, and all of the black pieces are, are somehow being held together. Huh. 
guess so. Looks just barely. Uh, <laughs> actually, somehow this this ended up being dangerous for for Ray. But that looks like a very forcing line, and then I think White should King, have no difficulties. Yeah, I think King F2 should be played. Like, I don't think there should be any other move to uh, spend time on. Cause uh, yeah, I mean, you could still just kind of play uh, Bishop takes C5. Knight C5, and you A move like B4, and then Knight D3 is defending all of White's weaknesses. But um, I, I think I, I do like this King F1 line instead. Because uh, it gets the king closer to the center, it gets you closer to uh, just a straight minor piece endgame, where your king is going to be a lot more active thanks to yeah. this extra extra time. Yeah. So the two serious, well, candid moves yeah. that you so have to think about is take take and king f one, and we just saw that Benjamin chose take after about a minute and a half, I guess something like that. Yeah. So bishop takes d c five is his choice. Uh, maybe in that line that I was saying, black could take on d4 rather than move the knight again. But um, r regardless, we do have this endgame now. And it looks like b4 would be the most natural move to my eyes. It gives you time to play knight d3 and make sure all your, all your weaknesses are covered for the moment. So Benjamin, looking like he's going to be up a pawn in this endgame, but not a very, very useful pawn Yeah, because at, like at if you play b4 now, knight a4, let's just say for the sake of the argument. Ah, okay, knight a4, maybe, maybe. then I, I can play b3. Knight c3. Uh, yeah, okay. And I guess I can play rook c1, but then you have some, 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 uh, some forking tricks. Yeah, I feel like this knight's going to keep jumping around. Yeah, this knight can can get annoying, I suppose. But also, if you don't really play b4, then, I mean, that's your only chance to keep the pawn. Or you can give it up. So, just king f1 from Benjamin, allowing rook takes b2. But, but then, uh, I suppose, maybe he's, he's planning just to play, like, a knight d3 move and uh, trade off these knights and go straight for a draw. Yeah, I guess, I mean, that's, that's a very reasonable uh, approach to this game. Honestly, you, you wouldn't have been able to do so many, I mean, anything with your pawns anyways. Uh, right, yeah, th this, one, this one I think is, is the deadest draw of, of the bunch here. This rec end game shouldn't be anything for, for anybody. Yeah, oh, um, actually, he offered, Benjamin offered a draw. Ray is still thinking. Yeah, we'll see what Ray decides to do about it. I mean, um, well. I do want to check back in with Wesley, so it seems like his game is the most interesting game oh still left. And it looks like material is equal for the moment, but the Black King might be running into some danger. But also the White King might be running into some danger. Uh, danger everywhere. Yeah, I think, though, uh, the White King does, does seem to be a bit safer here. Uh, there's no real way for black to uh, maneuver this knight to a square like f1, which would, which would kind of be the move needed to, to get at this white king here. Uh, meanwhile, queen f8 is preparing a move like rook d8, maybe, and uh, queen takes f7 as well, also obviously a threat. I think uh, Ilya has some problems uh, in this position. Yeah, I mean... Uh, how would you even try to get out of it with black? Uh, well, a move like queen c7, I guess, is defending the f7 pawn for the moment. And if you play rook d8, I don't think there is an immediate threat of checkmate. So I do have some time to try and play uh, some, some more moves to either defend my king or, or get at your king. Instead, we see queen g5. And I don't know what the plan is after after queen f7, knight e5 is a fork, but there's maybe a queen a2, but then queen c1, I don't know, it's too too complicated. It feels instead like we, a blunder. We just see rook d8 instead now. Oh, we also have a result on Fabiano's game, draw. So Fabi also not managing to get a full point, but he does get to a draw. Yeah, let's, I want to keep focused on this game because I think this is the this would be the decisive game of um, this round. Hopefully. Yeah, uh, I, I agree. I think Benjamin Bach is definitely going to end up with a draw in, in his game, 
And so it's really just down to, to Wesley So here and, and what he can make happen in this very interesting uh, position where both kings coming under a little bit of fire. Yeah. So this knight e5 move actually comes with a pretty serious threat of knight g4 check. Yes. If white were to capture, then queen h4 is, is a checkmate. So, but to my eyes, I, I'm wondering what's wrong with queen g8 check, king g6, and, and rook d6? Yeah. Um, I, I guess simply, you have to play simply f6 yeah. is forced. You have a queen e8 check, but then the king can come back to, to h7. And it's a little unclear how you actually break through. Mm. Was there anything um, after queen g5? Was there anything else that they could have done? Um, instead of rook d8, maybe there was, according to the engine, knight f5 was the only move to, to really win the game. Because like that uh, move makes a lot of sense. It, yeah. it just prepares rook g3, and then the game's kind of over. But uh, that was actually a missed opportunity for Wesley. It just because like it just I don't know. It feels like there should be something here because uh, I feel like it's more like a fight between the, the knights, whose knights would be more active at the end. Yeah. And like here in this specific situation, ideally you would want to play knight f5, but you can't because of knight f4 f3. So I feel like that's the problem. When the knight was on c4, knight f5 probably was. Um, yeah, well, the knight was on c4, and also the rook was on d3, which yeah, meant you could respond rook. to any queen f4 check with rook g3, which mm -hmm. would have really only served to help your attack. Uh, but now with the rook on d6 and the knight on e5, everything is a lot more, more active, yeah, I, I and think we're, this we're is back not, in another endgame. <laughs> yeah, I, is, this is not really going the way I wanted it to go. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, that being said, it, it could have gone a lot worse. Wesley yeah. didn't get checkmated or anything, but now in this endgame... Uh, I don't expect Wesley to, to be able to do much here. Although, the knight is attacked after knight f7, rook d7. There's some pressure along the seventh I rank. mean, you can just try and give some checks. Yeah. Knight e7, knight g6. Check, check, check. And we might actually just see a draw here by, by repetition. Overall, it was a pretty hard game to try and manage for both sides. And I think the knight... Queen g5, knight f5. I mean, if it, if it was a classic game, this would have found it. Yeah. No questions there, but in a, in rapid, it, it would take, um, yeah. I mean, I'm not complaining. Oh, Whoa. my goodness. So Wesley decides to play on. Uh, uh, plays <laughs> move rookie seven. Now. And, yeah, the, the game continues, I guess. Uh, playing but, on this time pressure, but... I mean, Wesley does have to be a little bit careful here. Those those queenside pawns for black could could get oh, rolling. My pawns. Oh, okay, king the, g3. The knight's attacked. You have to do something. Yeah, probably. Uh, There's a check. Uh, pawn g3 is Wesley's choice. Whoa. And now we have this exchange up endgame. Very interesting decision by Ilya to go for this. I guess he's confident in his ability to, to hold this position. I mean, But I yeah. don't think he's the one playing for a win anymore. That's true. That's what you just said is right. exactly. <laughs> uh, that being said, this looks actually to be a very simple fortress. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's no way white can actually... Oh. That's that's a tough one. That's a tough one to see. Wesley so blunders this fork and loses the game, actually. Wow. Okay. Not what I expected to see from the end of that game. And, ah, oh my god, Benjamin Bach hurt. looks to be in a little bit of trouble as well. Wait, what happened? Uh, I don't know how this, this Rook ah. End game got to this point. This should not be losing. <laughs> But it's it's not the easiest thing I've ever seen. Like I, it shouldn't be losing though. In fact, I maybe mean, White can can start picking up some of these pawns if if Black isn't careful. Okay, while well, Rook F four, so don't capture that Rook. All right, I'm on board. It is some pretty serious time pressure here. I know. King G two is a good move. Keep the King off the back rank. 
Okay, now the rook comes behind, hoping to uh, give some annoying checks from the eighth rank. But. And yeah, now king h2. Rook g3? You can, yeah, you can just take this. You have rook ah. g3 if you need it. it oh, a... but now f4 is a very, very nice move. And is this, is this simply a draw? I mean, the, the f4 pawn, according to my theory, should be, but this is a... I, 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 don't, I don't know my rook end games well enough to, to tell you. Ideally, it would be. Okay. But in this specific situation? I feel like it is a draw, because the king on the short side means that yeah, the also, black will have no shelter, uh, right? And the uh, rook end games, the one thing that I do know is for the pawn on g, the king could be passively in like g1 for white, and the rook could passively just be hanging on f1 and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, for the pawn f, the white has to actually play active. I mean, maybe not that active, because the king in g4 is a little worrying me. Um, well, okay, I could, rook I, f3, and, yeah. and it's, it's over. Uh, so Benjamin Bach does manage to hold this endgame, which is important news for us because Wesley So uh, hanging that unfortunate fork really uh, yeah. uh, not what we hope to see uh, in, in that game so that brings the, the total score to uh, not one to two but I think one and a half to two yes, and a half yes that's true uh, could have been one to three <laughs> could have been one to three very very easily yeah. uh, should have been two to two though in, in the yeah, long run, uh, I think. yeah because Wesley did have the, be the upper hand in his game, pretty right. much all game, except mm -hmm. um, when he entered the end game, it was a little rough for him to um, yeah, but find the I exact. Mean, he declined the repetition. He wanted to play on. Then he was up to the exchange, and it was it was just a clear fortress. Yeah, but I think he... I feel like he pushed too hard. Sometimes that happens when you're like pushing way too hard. Right. Sometimes it pays off, and sometimes, I mean, he, there were no chances for the opponent to actually like mess it up. Yeah. Even if he played g5, hg5, fg5, that would still, like, there is still, like... Well, maybe there. Uh. <laughs> but, um, no, very, yeah. very fortunate for Wesley. Um, but, okay, we have some very, very strong players on our team. I don't think we're, we're too deep in the hole here. Uh, this is, I think, the first time the Archbishops have been behind yeah, in a true. match, though. I don't think that has ever happened uh, yet, historically. So, breaking new ground here against Chicago Wind. Now, this is the team that Mike Cummer said we would have to be on the lookout for. This I is agree who he, with that statement. Said this is our, actually our this rivals. this um, this thing is. I feel like um, I think this um, and the the Canada boys. Yeah, the the Canada chess bras yeah. are actually in the <laughs> lead in the division. <laughs> yeah, I feel like these two teams are the teams to to win if we are going for the first. Um, which we still are, but I feel like, yeah, these two teams are the teams that we would have to um, cross because these two are, uh, I mean, yeah, they're objectively the, <laughs> the roughest. Yeah, the, these are the, the toughest teams, I think, in the division. And here we see the results. Um, Fabi, of course, only managing a draw against Quesada Perez. Uh, Ruzon Batista drew Lenier Dominguez as well in a very, very quick game. And Wesley So goes down to Ilya Nizhnik in uh, this endgame where he unfortunately blundered a knight fork. Uh, Benjamin Bach does hold the draw against Ray Robson uh, on our board four. And this is a kind of an unusual score for, for round one in the Pro Chess League. Usually round one is the, the biggest mis mismatch of, yeah. of the players. So you usually you get you know two wins on boards one and two and two losses on boards three and four. But uh, in this case, uh, a lot of draws. These players may be more evenly matched than we think. Yeah, I mean, just looking at their ratings, um, there's not much difference between the first board and the last board. Right. Um, there's still a difference. <laughs> yeah. But um, strength-wise, I feel like they're all pretty much the same. Um, and but, yeah, so, yeah, so the with that in, that in mind, these are the pairings for round two. But like you were saying, a lot of these players close to the same level. So yeah. it, it, it's, these rounds are all going to be pretty similar, actually, uh, in terms of, of the scores. Uh, so we have Ray Robson against Wesley So on uh, board one for Chicago, board three for us, actually. Uh, Ilya Nizhnik against Benjamin Bach. That's their board two against our board four. Uh, Fabiano Caruana against Bruzon Batista. 
And finally, Lenier Dominguez against Yasser Quesada Perez on uh, our board two and their board four, I think. Uh, it's a little mixed up. Yeah, yeah. It, it gets a little bit weird uh, in rounds two and three while they're, they're kind of transitioning through uh, up to the, the one-to-one -one matchups. But this is what we have to look forward to in round two. Now I think we're just waiting for the games to, uh, to get yeah, underway. Yeah, um, okay. Uh, so who do you think will be the first of our team to win? Uh, Fabi. Yes. And then Wesley, and then Dominguez, and then, then Benjamin. Honestly, I'm four, happy if Benjamin <laughs> keeps it solid all four yeah, rounds. Yeah, uh, I think that's definitely the strategy he should be going for, is, is just scoring some solid points, getting his draws in while he can. Uh, because that's what we really need from board four. We don't need board four to be scoring three, four points, two and a half even. We just need um, a couple points. Who from was board the kid four. we were playing last time? Uh, the board yeah, four? Yeah, Mar Marcus three? Harvey yeah. Uh, with a near 2,800 level performance in the Pro Chess League. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it just when you were talking <laughs> about board four ideally keeping it strong, it just uh, he just popped up in my brain and I was like, wow, yeah, that, yeah, that, we, that guy managed to keep it really. <laughs> we don't need we don't need that much from Benjamin Bach. We just yeah. need need a couple points uh, to make sure that we we walk away with a win in this match. And I think now uh, we're just waiting for the Chess.com people to to get this next round started as they are on a little bit of a break, I think. So. Uh, before this round started, I had a, a little quick look at the, the standings. It looks like we are actually a point and a half behind going into today, the yeah. Canada Chess Bros. So I think them, uh, the Canada Chess Bros and us, are actually the only two teams to win in the first two weeks. Uh, I think the other teams all went one and one. Oh. Uh, or 0 oh and 2 for, for a couple teams. But um, So it's just down uh, to us and them who are still undefeated, and they did, I think, win today against the Brazil Capybaras in kind of a, another blowout. So they uh, are still solidly in the lead. So if we want to, to catch up to them, we got we got some work yeah, to do. Yeah, but I feel like this this is um, this specific match for us, it's more about like playing right. it solid and keeping it yeah, this tight. Yeah, this is definitely one of the ones yeah. where we just we want to walk away with eight and a half yes. at, at the least. Yes. Um, so I feel like as, as, as long as we we cross um, the Webster boys. <laughs> yeah, as long as we, we get to eight and a half, uh, uh, putting us yeah. back as, in the winning Yeah, game. and then like I feel like uh, after that, mm, actually, who are we playing next time? Uh, next week, uh, I am not sure who we have, but I know that in week five, that is when we have our chance against the Canada Chess Bros. So that'll definitely be one to watch. Yes. Uh, um, looks like next week we have the California Unicorns. Huh. So we'll be on the lookout for them. I don't know too much about that team. But I do know that week five is us against the Canada Chess Bros. Well, I was trying to um, deter um, like evaluate our chances. When is the time that we're actually going to have a team that I can actually go for 14 to 16? Uh, uh, we can actually do what? Score like 14, uh, 14 points, 16, 16 points? It's ideally. Uh, yeah. Well, it looks like the next round is underway. So let's go ahead and, and take a look at these games. So we have Fabi against um, ba ba Batista. Uh, Batista. I'm bad at pronunciation. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh oh, it's at another Lopez. Yeah, another open Roy. As long as it's not Berlin. I love to watch it. Okay, so I don't actually know much of the theory here. Um, but I prepared this a lot with white at some point in my life. <laughs> <laughs> there are like some crazy stuff. I yeah, it looks pretty natural for white here. He's just developing all his pieces. Black does get an early d5, but maybe this pawn is going to end up being a little bit weak to my eyes. Um, yeah, I feel like the next, I mean, right now it looks more like a somewhat normal Lopez um, because uh, this knight will try to come to, the b1 knight would ideally try to come and jump around a little. Right. But because this knight's here, there's a chance that it will just get traded off. So that's something that uh, depends if black would continue with something like knight c5 or not? So uh, I'm kind of expecting actually a move like uh, bishop c5 and, and maybe black tries to play this move d4. Um, 
Although, actually, looking at it, it seems difficult to achieve. I, I feel just like... I mean, the, yeah, go sorry. ahead. <laughs> uh, just from what I remember from a while ago preparing this, there is a line with bishop in c5, but I feel like instead of bishop e7, you should have played like earl earlier bishop uh, c5. Right. And then, yeah, there are the ideas with d4 and stuff. But yeah, I'm, I'm just remembering a really, really crazy game, I think, from like, yeah. one of the St. Louis Rapid and Blitzes, where the, it looks somewhat like this. And, and black pushes this pawn like all the way to d3, and then it just stays there for the whole game. I but, do remember uh, preparing something like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't think it was quite the same as this one, though. Uh, we do see knight b to d2, and maybe black will be trading this off. We have to make some decision with this e4 knight, because it's currently under threat. Uh, so either knight takes d2 or, or knight c5, I think is what I the piece is I feel like knight c5 it would be the more um, feisty way to go. Yeah, but maybe bishop c2 is, is something white's happy to do anyways. Yeah. It's not, not, it's not too bad to be hope, hopeful for your opponent to want to be feisty. <laughs> sure. Uh, Thank we you. We do see nice c5. And so now I think bishop c2 yeah. makes the most sense. And then and there are some b4 stuff could yeah. be coming up. A move like b4 forces this knight away, and then some and things like queen d3 Lopez. do become possible. And the thing is, like, there's always this, um, if you do get to play b4, um, in long run, long run, you could consider something like a4 yeah. because if there's take, then a6 pawn is really weak, and if no, not taking, then b5 pawn is under attack with queen. Yeah, I definitely agree. Yeah. Uh, we do see bishop g4 from black. Not a move I was really expecting, but uh, I guess he's just trying to loosen white's control over this e5 pawn a little bit. Uh, we see knight b3 from Fabi. So he's responding to this threat to his knight on f3 uh, by going after the pawn on d5, it looks like. So if bishop takes f3 here, I imagine we'll just see queen f3. And then if knight takes e5, queen takes d5 as possible. And uh, it's just a simple trade of pawns. And white will have the bishop pair with an open center. Yeah. I mean, I trust Bob is open. He's <laughs> but... Uh, I feel like for me, if I didn't know the opening, knight b3 wouldn't be one of the moves that I was I would be considering. Yeah, um, it, it's not the most natural, definitely, because yeah. uh, you you tend to want to recapture on f3 with the knight instead of the queen, uh, or or obviously the the pawn, which I guess is an option here. But uh, knight b3 is a very active try, I think, to get rid of this knight on c5, bring this bishop back to b3, and go after this weak d pawn. Um, that being said, there are three other games going on, so maybe we should take <laughs> I, uh, Yeah, I, sometimes when you start with Fabi's games and it's kind of, <laughs> you just stay there, you forget. It's, yeah, it is difficult to, to look away sometimes. Yeah, some, especially some openings are just like one of your openings and you're just like, wow, yeah. these are, I don't remember my openings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so this is Lanier's game. Um, it was a nice E4, E5. Go, starting in. Uh, okay, so we of have course, an Italian. Of course, a4. Yeah. It's, yeah, the Italian a4. And the knight e7. Okay, at least I'm glad I played the right openings with black. <laughs> uh, okay, so bishop b3, bishop d7. Yeah, and this is our current position. I'm actually not really familiar with this bishop d7 idea. Yeah, uh, me as well. Uh, I, I don't have too much knowledge in this uh, deep, deep the theoretical uh, games of, of the Italian and the Roy Lopez. But um, I always thought like your idea is to try and push for d5 as black. So you would want to play something like bishop e6. Well, so if there's like... Yeah, I mean, it looks like black is, is still kind of obeying this, this rule, but instead of e6, he puts his bishop onto c6, where it does put some more pressure on, on white's center and, and the king's side, you can imagine, after a move like d5. Hmm. So I think a very similar idea to bishop yeah. e6, just picking a different square for this bishop. Of course, d5 looks natural for white, trying to attack this, this bishop, Oof. but you don't want to open up mm. that diagonal. And as well as close off your own yes. diagonal for, for your also bishop. Also, the other thing is, as soon as you close off the center, then um, you're going to get bombarded with something like knight f4. Exactly. Knights, the other knight moves, and some crazy f5s will jump in the game. It's 
I wouldn't. I mean, I would like that as black. But <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, d5, usually usually not a good move here. This much I, I do know. Unless you see, like, a clear um, clear advantage that, like, you do. You have everything ready. You play d5, and then you're rushing in with, like, you can immediately do something like c5. Right. Yeah, I think that would be something to keep in mind. Um, let's take a look at Bach, Bach's game. Whoa. So we have Benjamin Bach against Ilya Mishnik. And here it looks like I'm just gonna do a really yeah. quick what recap. Happens? So okay, normal we had some a uh, Catalan, an open Catalan round. One thing that I was told not to do in Catalan as black was to not be greedy about the pawns. Don't I mean, be greedy. Okay. Yeah, um, that's something that I was told not to do. But again, I didn't have the best of coaches growing <laughs> up or also the we, best of uh, we've talked about this one before. <laughs> yeah um, yeah it, it looks like things have, have kind of worked out for Benjamin here though this position seems perfectly reasonable okay um, it scares me but he's, yeah yeah and he's, he's getting a little little attacked on the king's side just a little this the c4 pawn definitely is is worthwhile uh, it's worth keeping around I think I feel like if that bishop instead of e7 was on g7, it would make me feel so much safer. Well, I, I think he's on his way. <laughs> um, g5, and if a move like queen g4, I think we can expect bishop h6, and then this bishop will be will be landing on the g7 square, or maybe just staying on h6 even, keeping uh, tabs on the bishop on c1. Uh, you can expect this knight to come to, to d5 maybe, uh, adding more pressure to e3. And then uh, I, I guess Black's kind of just going to be trying to hold down the fort here on the king's side, uh, while while White's trying to, to break it open. Uh, yeah, I think what you said is pretty accurate description of ideally what would happen, but well, let's focus on that then. <laughs> um, so yeah, what do you think uh, White's ideas are though? How, how is White going to try and? and get at the king here. There, there's always, of uh, course, like sacrifices to, to consider on g6. And maybe that's why Benjamin chooses queen d8 to prevent this queen from looking at the g6 pawn. I feel like if you, if as black, you are fast enough to bring in your knight and like bring your knight back to, four, let's say, d5. Right. Um, you could theoretically still be in time. But so what if what if Bishop G six? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking this about. This is the question, I guess. Or something like Rook F two right now. The idea is to take on G six and then um, well, take I, on E six. I think if you give me a, a tempo, I'm gonna play King G seven and then with my G pawn a little bit more defended and Queen takes yeah, E six not coming with check. I think it's it's a lot safer. Yeah, and that Bishop on C one looks like a tall pawn. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I take back. No, 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 no. Rook F two. <laughs> I don't want to play Rook F2 anymore. Um, yeah, I actually I think I like Benjamin's position here. Um, uh, unless White proves something pretty quickly, he's just going to have a, a much more favorable position on the queen side, where things like B4 and C3 are in fact going to come uh, with, with some pretty strong effects. Uh, this knight might also end up on the D3 square, uh, as well as D5, so that's something to look out for. And yeah, I think Ilya really needs to come up with a concrete idea right now, or else, or else Benjamin's gonna gonna kind of start running away with this one. I like the sound of that. I mean, I don't really know what White. How would White want to try and improve? Uh, except like some crazy sacrifices, but I I don't right. think they work actually because even if Bishop G six, uh, F G six, Bishop. Uh, what do you want to do? Oh, wow. So we see King G2 from White, uh, preparing so to bring the rook to the H file. So I guess just King G7 as black should be good enough? Makes sense to me. And if King G7... What can White do? Something like Rook H1, maybe? Uh, yeah, Rook H1 is always going to be met with, with Rook H8, of course. And then... Uh, I'm really not sure how you continue with, with White. And this is the problem, I think, with Ilya's position. Whereas with black, you know, king g7 is very natural, knight d5 is very natural. Yeah, and then once I'm, I'm confident in my king's safety, I can play things like b4, things like c3, 
and make some, some concrete threats on that side of the board. Yeah. I was just thinking if you, as white, could you move like, could you like move with e4 bishop and then try and push e4? Pawn, yeah, the d4 so, pawn is way too weak. Yeah, it weakens d4, and, and also where do you where do you actually put this bishop from e4 is yeah. is another tough question. I think maybe for white, you might try and activate this bishop via the d2 square, but then I'm not sure where you you really go after that. So well, yeah. let's say king g7 and, and white plays bishop d2. Uh, I guess that's that's asking for knight d5, and yep. then. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure what the next move is for for Ilya, really. So I think I'm. I'm saying this one. I, I like for for Benjamin. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. Let's take a look at. Um, who did we look at? We have not seen Dominguez's game, I believe. Yeah. So he is up against uh, Quesada Perez here. And we have another. His time position. is really scary, honestly. Yeah, Lenier does does this where he gets into some pretty serious time pressure, but this this guy has has nerves of steel. I don't. <laughs> I want my players to have at least half a time remaining by the yeah. end of the game. <laughs> yeah, it, it is it is difficult. Uh, so we do see E takes D five though. Uh, um, Lenier does make this decision. I mean, let's take a quick look at. So we saw up until some some around here, right? And then we're right. talking about something like push a bit four. Oh wow. Oh, closing up. So notably, um, though, he, he closes it up after he he takes off this light square yeah, bishop. Yeah, and, and that's now. actually pretty smart. And now you you're going for this square, while you still have your dark colored bishop to keep your square safe. And, yeah, so that's why we see black play so actively, though, trading off in the center immediately before white has time to bring these knights into the game. And now uh, we have this position where white uh, has this extra C pawn in exchange for black's E pawn. And I guess it's going to be a question of how useful black's E pawn is, is going to be. It really supports this F4 square for the black knights, but maybe it, it can also be a little bit of a weakness with uh, the knight on f3 and the rook on e1, uh, both aimed at this pawn. So, as white, I guess he's deciding whether or not he wants to take off these these queens. And he decides yes, and I think I, think I agree that, with yeah, that decision. I think uh, queen exchange was a pretty um, smart and decisive idea, because if you wouldn't have done the queen exchange, then um, you, would, you wouldn't really know how to improve. Like where would where are you trying to place your knights as white? Yeah, no, it's it's not so difficult. I want to play maybe knight f f one to d two, and then I can kind of take my maybe? pick of of c four or e four depending on what the situation calls for. I was for c four. Uh, yeah, uh, I I like c four as well. You just have to be careful that um, that pawn e four isn't ever going to be strong. I think. Well, so we see knight f3 knights. go. Huh. Okay. And I guess this is partially looking to, to step out of the move um, e5 to e4, which would have hit the knight yeah. in the previous line. <clears throat> okay, let's, I think we didn't look at the Wesley Stowe's game. Ah, okay. That's who we were forgetting about. I mean, not really forgetting, but yeah. because, well, yeah, this position doesn't look that. Um, Looks to be a draw. There are no knights. So that's good news. Yeah, no, no knights. It's a little harder to hang a rook to a rook fork. <laughs> Although he yeah. maybe he'll get skewered. I don't oh want to say say anything. No, uh, no. This is uh, this would be an easy draw, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. In fact, Wesley goes to pick up this e pawn now. Yeah, and then probably some. I mean, depends on what uh, what White wants, but. If white doesn't want to fight anymore, rook b6 would be a good way to um, call it call it a day. You could, I mean, white could also try to play something like b5 now, take, and then take back, or play yeah, like a6. Some 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 ideas there, but I think at the at the end of the day, Wesley's in, in absolutely no danger here. In fact, if anything, I think he might be winning a pawn. Oh my god, wait, also, is that 10 seconds that I yeah, see? Yeah, he's, he's down to 10 seconds. B5 was his choice. 
No, I think rook a2 is the correct way to, yeah. to play here. Yeah, only, only, only uh, way to... Rook takes b5, maybe, and after rook a6, I think this is the end game that Ray Robson is going to hope to draw. But, but this one, it's a draw. Uh, yeah, but, but with uh, two seconds on the clock, and you know, anything can, can really happen, yeah. right? And it's not the classic four versus three where all of white's pawns are connected. It's, yeah. it's a four vers versus three where this e pawn is a little bit lonely on the e4 square. But I still, okay, this is still a draw. I mean, it would take a miracle, I want to call it. Yeah, um, uh, I, I think that, that'd be fair to say. But, you know, you, you never know. Wesley so he's a tricky guy. He got tricked <laughs> in the last game, but uh, we'll see what he can, he can do in this round. But, okay, objectively, how would you try to push? Would you try to do so? Oh, maybe something like, yeah, that's what yeah, I was something thinking. Something like h4, and now... g5, aww. Oh, you were thinking g5? I was thinking maybe g6 and f5. And, and we can try and play like this for the, the past e pawn. Where are you going? Uh, he's got to go somewhere. Right down to his, his final, final seconds here. This is very dangerous. I love it. <laughs> I mean, it's opportunities for our team. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, what are, I mean, maybe, whoa, whoa, whoa. Where are you going, my man? Rook of three check. Ah. I think some crazy things ah. are happening in Fabiano Caruana's game. So maybe we should take a look at this one. I can't. Where, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this, this short game, game with right down to, to seconds is, is something, but I, yeah, I think this, Bobby's position here is, is just off, off the wall. I, I just know. saw that they both have enough time. I was like, eh, we'll come back to that later. Yeah, I just, what's going on here, though? Rookie Whoa. four, and is there a knight takes f4, I, uh, but then knight takes g6, but then knight takes g6 back, and then rook e7, and then knight e5. How many rooks does black have? Oh, hold on a second. What's going on here? <laughs> what are, is happening? Are you, are you referring to our good friend, um, Mr. Engine? Well, it's, it's, uh, chess is a draw, of course. No, it was never in doubt. But, um, but what is going on here? King g7, not the move I would have seen coming from black, but it well, makes I mean, sense. Yeah, he's he's stepping like, on a knight g6. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, and all kind of gnarly knight of sevens to follow and all the pins of uh, the <laughs> g6 pawn. And yeah, that was actually a pretty smart move. I, I am all for king g7. But where, where, where does white, what is white's next move even? How do you take advantage of this? You can just move this knight maybe back to f3. And then you have rook e6 uh, pin ideas, things like bishop b3, things like knight g5 might all be strong. Well, I was thinking about something like knight g4. And then yeah, you want to like queen h6 just to oh, with, push yeah, the king H6 back well. again. Um, I think maybe knight g4, I, I do have time to play rook f5. And then there's things like rook h5 to, to worry about if you want to go in for... Yeah. Queen G six or Queen H six rather. I, I don't know. Very complicated position here. Um, we'll we'll see what Fabi comes up with, but this is this is a crazy one to be sure. And simply G three is is Fabi's choice. Defending his F pawn. Uh, what, what what a way to play chess. Uh, so now I guess things like Knight G four become a little bit more of a serious threat since F four is defended. So things like rook f4 wouldn't wouldn't be uh, a possibility. Oh, but, we have a uh, result. Woohoo! Yeah, Whoa. Wesley wins this end game. Not even on time. Not even on time. On resignation. Like we said, this this end game was was a little bit more tricky than maybe we were giving it credit for. Um, Black did go for g5 and then actually managed to pick up all of the kingside pawns. Wow. And and that's all it takes to uh, go Wesley so. Well, see, yeah. logically, last game should have been a draw, and this game should have also been a draw, so... Yeah, although this one, happy. I mean, this this one was not easy for, for Ray. The, yeah. the last one was just, it, it was a bit silly. But uh, Wesley So definitely going for some redemption here. Uh, gets the full point against Ray Robson. Board one for uh, the Chicago Wind. And, well, yeah. Let's take a look at Benjamin's game, because it's been a while since we took a look at it. And the, that and bishop came, yeah, came out. Some, some progress has been made for both sides yeah. here. Uh, Black's no longer getting checkmated, which is good. 
but White has solved most of his problems, I think, his, his structural problems, as well as this, the C pawn is notably missing now. Oh, that's actually my pawn. But I'm still kind of shocked of how, like, bishop d2, then bishop c3, and then what happened to d4 pawn? Yeah, I, there was a pawn on d4. <laughs> I don't know. I Let's don't know. Out. Oh, wait, hold on. We have another. Oh. Ah, Dominguez actually lost this game. Yes. Wow. Uh, against Where Quesada did this Perez. go wrong? Because it felt like, I mean, the last time we looked at it, it was somewhere around the queens were off the board. And right. he and was. We, we just saw knight d2 and then knight c4. Maybe that was a little slow. Yeah, it looks like black got to push this, this f pawn and, and the rooks invaded along this, this f file and became very, very annoying. And then, wow, uh, Dominguez just hung a piece. Just, just hung his knight on e4, it looks like, at the end of the game. Um. Wait, what? Yeah, just rook d2 hang, hangs, hangs a knight. Uh, some unfortunate blunders from, from our team here today. But uh, we're definitely not out, out of it. Why don't we check back in on Fabi's game as they are down to their, their final, final seconds. Looks like Fabi has won some material back. He was down the exchange. Yeah. Now it looks like he won a full piece back in return. Oh, Boko lost? Wait, what? Oh, and Benjamin Bach has fallen to Ilya Nizhnik as well. Okay, we'll take a look at that though. Let's let's stick with Fabi because this game I think is nearing its its I conclusion. Think Mike's having a heart attack. Yeah, this is the the last game of the round actually. And Queen E five looks like checkmate. Looks like check. Everybody agrees. Yes. Checkmate. Every, all right, everybody agrees. Okay. Even the opponent agrees. Wow. So that was, uh, was kind, kind of a wild finish to that one. But uh, at the end of the day, two to two in round two. Yeah, we're still one one down though. Uh, yeah, that that's a fair point. Uh, we are. I mean, we're happy about behind. the the wins, but yeah. Uh, yeah, this was this was a crazy round. So oh, Wesley so beats Ray in, in a rook end game, which should be a draw. Fabi beats Batista in, in this crazy, crazy like wild game where it looks like he was yeah. down. He sacrificed an exchange at some point to, Bunch of stuff. to get this attack. Um, Dominguez just hangs a knight against uh, Quesada Perez, and then yeah. Ilya Nizhnik defeats Benjamin Bach somehow. Uh, we were unsure. This, this I mean, we really had it. We were it. looking at it when the bishop was still here. Yeah, it looks like ah gave ooh yeah, that Ilya was actually just, pretty nice. Ilya just snagged this this uh, this d pawn out of nowhere, and that was kind of the, the end. Maybe instead of knight going to d three in this position, knight should have went to d five. But then bishop yeah. d five, e d five, maybe some e six. Maybe that's what he was worried about. Well, maybe you, you can still play queen takes d. Uh, no, uh, I guess the tactics don't don't quite work. No, there's the probably e4 would be enough to. Yeah, e e4 uh, attacks the bishop on g5 actually yeah. twice, which is the problem. So queen d8 isn't enough to defend. So knight d3, and then uh, yeah, we see the c4 pawn fall off the board. Actually, this, the queen a8 was pretty smart because you're trying. Why? Why can't you try and? Um, Yeah. What's the idea about queen a8? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Because, oh, well, it's not like you can. White can only play d5. Because e4, bishop d2. Right. Rook f3, I'm sure there's some crazy rook h2 somewhere. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe maybe he was trying to force d5 to, to try and get this pawn back. But d5 forcing it only kind of like opens that up. Yeah, I think he just underestimated uh, White's activity in this endgame. Yeah, and the bishop on d4 is really strong, and the bishop, black colored bishop, it can't really do anything anymore. It's kind of locked out of the game. You know, usually yeah. you want to have the bishop uh, on on the other color to your to your own pawns, but uh, here the white bishop was really holding together all of White's weaknesses, and so we had to, uh, or Bach rather, had to trade off this bishop to even attack any of these pawns, and. Now this this rook end game I think is just hopeless. Yeah, the 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 pawns are way too advanced. 
Yeah, this was not the way I was kind of hoping it to go. Um, yeah, so that's that's round two, and even though it's not going quite quite the way we had hoped, uh, two to two in round two uh, is not an awful score. We are just one point behind after that second round. Uh, Wesley so of course, defeating Ray Robson, uh, Benjamin Bach falling to Ilya Nizhnik, Fabi defeating uh, Gruzon Batista, and Lenny Dominguez actually falling to Yasser Quesada Perez after he, he blundered blundered a night. So that's that's blunder that's the second blunder in two rounds for, for our team. People yeah. keep your pieces. Uh, keep we your like pieces, pieces over here. We get sad when you lose your pieces. All right. So um, with that in mind, it is four and a half to three and a half. And uh, maybe we'll take just a quick break while we wait for round three to get sure. started here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's that's a good idea. They're halfway there. All right. So Sounds join us in just a few minutes for round three. Yep. When you visit St. Louis, you'll probably want to watch the Cardinals or the Blues. But what about after the game? Heading back to the hotel would be a major error. Mm -mm. Instead, boogie through the city and discover the music that gave the blues their name at the National Blues Museum, Broadway Oyster Bar, or even the legendary Blueberry Hill. So whether you love the Cardinals, the Blues, or the Blues, come play with us. Hey, you guys know I can't play this, right? St. Lou is always exploring. Be surprised. Be intrigued. Be delighted. The World Chess Hall of Fame in St. Louis is nothing you'd expect and everything you love. Three galleries highlight the history, culture, and creativity behind the game. Explore chess in ways you never imagined. It's a one-of-a-kind cultural institution where rare artifacts and world-class art play together. The World Chess Hall of Fame. Mind. Art. Experience. Is that you, Mr. Matheny? Can we get your autograph? Yeah, of course. I think it's pretty cool that you love chess so much. We love chess, too. I joined a school's chess program and got to meet a real-life grandmaster. And I got a trophy this big. One time, I played a police captain after school and checkmated him in 27 moves. Wow. I should be asking for your autographs. Check out all chess has to offer at stlouischessclub.org. Welcome to the chess capital of the United States. The St. Louis Chess Campus in the heart of the vibrant Central West End has established itself as a premier global destination for chess and is comprised of two unique nonprofit institutions. The Chess Club and Scholastic Center of St. Louis is recognized as the top chess facility in the world and plays host to all major tournaments, including the U.S. Chess Championships and the Sinkfield Cup, one of the strongest chess tournaments globally. Tournaments are broadcast online to more than 150 countries, led by an expert commentary team of grandmasters. The Chess Club is an educational organization committed to promoting the game of chess, with a specific focus on bringing the benefits of chess to children throughout the St. Louis area. Research shows children who play chess exhibit improved analytical skills and increased confidence. The Chess Club is highly engaged with the local community, bringing scholastic chess programs to more than 100 schools, providing hundreds of classes each week. Directly across the street from the Chess Club is the World Chess Hall of Fame. This one-of-a-kind cultural institution invites visitors to experience chess in imaginative ways and is home to the U.S. and World Chess Halls of Fame. Cutting-edge exhibitions feature rare, historic chess artifacts paired with world-class art. Innovative programming explores the intersection of chess, art, and culture. Visitors can enjoy interactive programs designed around the exhibitions and monthly music in the galleries. The World Chess Hall of Fame is nothing you expect and everything you love. Three different galleries and a premier gift shop highlight the culture, history, and creativity behind the game. Come visit, play chess, leave enriched. To learn more about the St. Louis Chess Campus, visit stlchesscampus.org. You may have heard about St. Louis's world-class museums, art, history, science, even magic. But you may not know we have an entire museum dedicated to play with a 10-story slide and a Ferris wheel on top. Don't let all this family fun slide by you. Whose kids are these? 
St. Lou is always exploring. Anybody? No matter your age or skill level, chess is a great game to learn and play. The St. Louis Chess Club offers affordable memberships for families, students, and individuals. There's so much going on at the club with lectures, classes, ladies' nights, and tournaments. In addition, there's always a grandmaster in residence to help teach, learn, and play. Come join us at the St. Louis Chess Club and see what chess has to offer. St. Louis, you'll probably want to watch the Cardinals or the Blues. What about after the game? Heading back to the hotel would be a major error. Mm -mm. Instead, boogie through the city and discover the music that gave the Blues their name at the National Blues Museum, Broadway Oyster Bar, or even the legendary Blueberry Hill. So whether you love the Cardinals, the Blues, or the Blues, come play with us. Hey, you guys know I can't play this, right? St. Lou is always exploring. And welcome back to round three of the Pro Chess League. Uh, of course, my name is Caleb Denby. And I'm joined by the wonderful international master, Dorsa Derek Shine. Thank you, Caleb. Uh, Hi. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, yeah. we already looks, have games going, so looks let's like we're, hop in. We're rolling. Uh, no time to waste. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have the game between Ilya and Fabi going on. And even though it's barely, I mean, almost there in move 21. Um, we have already entered endgame? Uh, yeah, I, I guess you could call this an endgame. There's still a couple pieces on the board, uh, as well as both rooks for both sides. And it looks like there's some pressure along this F file yeah. uh, that Fabi's going to have to deal with. Um, but for the moment, he, he is actually up a pawn, we should say. Yeah, I wanted to take a quick look at the opening. Okay, so some sort of an uh, English opening. I'm curious, how did he win the pawn? Well, it looks oh. like um, Black just, just kind of launched this pawn forward to f5. And yeah, f5 probably was not the smartest move. Um, because yeah. now you get this knight c5, and you do this maneuver, and the f5 pawn is really weak. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's it's a little awkward for White to try to defend it, but yeah. uh, so, so White played this move knight e4, actually, looking just to uh, trade it off for some activity here. So after knight e4, Black does capture the pawn, but uh, then White gets this move knight d6, and Bishop takes f5 uh, yes, in, in return. Yes, exactly. And, and the that's, that's how we, we got to where we are right now, after yeah, the Yeah, and they actually <laughs> played five more moves <laughs> yeah, since they're, we were they're moving fast. Wow, this... Uh. So it looks like Fabi is uh, maintaining the extra pawn for just a moment here, but, I mean, after rook f8, y you have to imagine rook d8 is Fabi's response, and then after rook f7, you would think rook d7, and this might e just yeah. be a, a repetition I here. mean, let's keep in mind that Fabi is black, right. and the when, I mean, with black, it's really hard to fight when white is, like, um, happy with the draw. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. But yeah, uh, let's, let's we, we do need to start scoring yeah. some points here, uh, keeping in mind that we are down uh, down a point uh, after uh, after those first two rounds. Score, of course, three and a half to four and a half. So we need to catch up in the near future. Um, I agree. I 
Let's give this game a little bit of time and see if they come up with something else. Whose game do you want to see? Um, uh, we Wesley's. can check out Wesley Sows, maybe. Yeah. He has whites against... Oh, my God. I can't see. Uh, Unieski Quesada Perez. Thank you. Uh, and it looks like uh, he has a little bit of a spatial advantage in the center with these pawns I, I like D4 his, and E5. Um, I'm, I, I like White's position. That's my position. I stand with it. Unless uh, there's something horribly wrong with it. Uh, yeah, I, I don't really disagree. One thing to keep in mind, though, is that Black does have this D5 square. So uh, if Black gets, gets his couple spare moments to play maybe this knight now back to e7 and into d5, uh, yes. things might start looking up. But the question is, does he have time to, to really do uh, something That's like the thing. That? I'm thinking maybe White could start pushing crazy right now. Maybe something like, if it works, maybe queen a4 and, oh, or going yeah. for d6 square. So, so instead, this, this knight d2 move, like you said, is aiming for, for the d6 square. So you can see something like knight c4 or knight e4 both aim to put this knight into d6 where it will wreak some havoc uh, in the black camp. So queen d5 for the moment stops both knight c4 and knight e4. I feel like what, as white, you could think about queen a4 more seriously now. Yeah, queen I a4 think, uh, pinning, pinning the knight. Yeah, and then you have the ideas of rook c1 or knight c4, and I feel like those would be valid um, concerns for black. Or yes, little rook c1. Simply rook c1, and, and knight c4 is still coming. Uh, you have to wonder, though, how safe the black king is going to be if it simply just casts his king's side. I think this oh. might be what... what uh, Perez is, is planning here. Well, if simple castle, can't you just play something like f4 as white immediately? Oh uh, yeah, f4 I guess looks like an interesting idea to, to open things up. Um, uh, at some point though, you might have to like address if, if knight takes d4 is ever a real threat. Um, uh, I'm not sure if it is in that position, but it, it might be. <laughs> In fact, I'm, I'm not sure what happens after knight takes d4 in this current position here. I'll uh, probably queen a4 check is, yeah, yeah. is the idea. Okay. Um, something like knight b5 shouldn't really work at that position. But what I was thinking is if if something like short castle, maybe even queen g4 first to defend the, to supposedly defend d4 and keep the ideas with f4 and like that should be even stronger. If something like queen g4 f Five works, then. Yeah, uh, I think I like this queen g4 move. I, I wouldn't be convinced about f5 for black, um, and, and so I guess f4 is is really just gonna gonna be a permanent problem for for black to deal with. Maybe also there's a knight c4 for for white here, keeping with the original plan of just bringing this knight into d6, and and then maybe we can follow this one up with with f4 as well. Uh, yeah, but I'm a little worried if black could actually go crazy and play f5. Ah, oh, thank you, queen g4. Okay. <laughs> so queen g4 is played. And now, what can black do? Maybe this f5 move is, is worth I feel like f5 is at. the only move that you would actually start be, you would actually have to have a good response to as white. Well. Otherwise, you're just going to do something like 94 now. Right. So very natural is, is just to, to take... Uh, on passant with, with e takes f6. Yeah. And then I guess, uh, I'm not sure how exactly black wants to recapture, but uh, I guess we'll never know because we see knight e7 instead. But yeah, no, I agree with you. I think knight e4 looks like a powerful idea. Or f4 immediately. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, f4 immediately. There might be a knight f5, and then uh, um. I'm not totally sure what's, what's happening uh, after bishop f2, but yeah, so we do um. see knight e4. Out of five, and it might even be time for, for some sacrifices. Who's who's to say for certain? You want to take on g five? I really kind of do want to take with on bishop g five. Or knight? I think with the knights. With By g5? the knights, I meant the bishop. <laughs> I think I want to take with the bishop. By the bishop, I meant the. I want to take <laughs> with the knight Hold on. on g five. What do you want to keep on the board? Uh, well, they're all dying is the problem, no, no matter what I do. Um, if I take with the knight, uh, there's knight takes e3, I think. Uh, and so I'll play f takes e3, and then I'll lose my, my knight on g5 as well. 
But if I play bishop takes g5, maybe I get to keep the knight on the board, but it seems a little bit too slow. There's like queen takes d4 in the ends. I don't think I have time really to follow through on my threats. So maybe I just can't take this g5 pawn. Uh, with that in mind, uh, there's moves like rook c7 to consider. There's oh, maybe something um, like rook c3. Yeah, rook c3 as well, aiming to, to swing over to the king's side. Aww. Knight g3 is Wesley's choice, trying to kick this knight out of its f5 home. And yeah, I, I would think he's looking to follow this one up with, with f4 as, as well. Uh, so if my g3, like queen g3 and then f4, something like that? Yeah, I, I think so. Okay. I don't think you really want to play f takes g3. It, it opens up the f file, but I, I don't think it's really really worth doing here. Yeah, if, I mean, if the knight was still on e4 and then you could have the f file open, yeah, probably. I don't but yeah, the, the knight will be gone. So sad. <laughs> um, well, maybe we can sit on this game for a little bit and, and check out what's going on. And some of the other ones here. Uh, yeah, so what do you think of this game between uh, Dominguez and, and Ray Robson? Where are my rooks? Where this are is another, the rooks? This is another Berlin. Looks Please like don't a Berlin be a Berlin. To me. Of course it's a Berlin. Uh, Berlin. Yeah, so no problems for black really oh, in, in this line. Berlin. This one looking to be a draw in much the same way uh, Dominguez's round one was a draw. Yeah. So these players really not looking to challenge Dominguez with the white pieces. But, um, Is it just because he's Latino, they have this huge, like, okay, that was a bad, <laughs> not, maybe not the best, uh, but. I don't know. <laughs> I think maybe he's just a, like one of the best chess players in the world, and they understand that. So, well, with Fabi and Wesley, they go for the blood. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's very, very strange. Yeah. Well, I think Fabi and Wesley both weren't playing uh, the Berlin with black. Maybe if given the opportunity, uh, these players would be happy, happy to draw simply. But uh, Fabi mm. and Wesley just kind of aren't letting them. Um, but we do see yeah, Bishop D2, and I, I don't think we need to look at this game ever again. Uh, I, I just wanted to point ones. out that um, one of the new emojis that came out okay. for Apple was mm -hmm. the... The yawning one? I thought uh, that was pretty interesting. Yeah, it's a useful one to be yeah. sure. Whenever I say Berlin, that just pops out in my head. That's. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so there's a, there's the thinking. Yeah, no more moves there. We haven't seen how Benjamin. How is Benjamin Bach doing here? He's doing well, I think. This is not not a bad position at all for uh, for Ben. Looks a little. Uh, uh, a little what? <laughs> I was going. To, I, w I wanted to say something like not very straightforward, but I changed it. I, w I just want to say that it looks like um, it's very time consuming. Time he, consuming? He has about half of. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I think the the position on the chessboard really does favor him, though. Um, uh, there's this weak pawn mm, on d6. I feel like the problem is that the bishop on d2, you don't really know what you're doing with it, and well, it's kind it's of blocking the d1 rook. And yeah. like, if that rook from d1 was on like on c2, you would have a more much more clear idea what you're doing as well, white. I, I think this bishop on d2 is actually pressuring b4 though pretty effectively. Uh, yeah. And in fact, it can can white just take this this pawn immediately? I wonder. Just a takes b4, free pawn. Free pawn. I, I like those. Everybody wants the free pawn. I want the free pawn. I'll take the free pawn. He's Good taking job, the free Benjamin. pawn. <laughs> Everybody free agrees. Pawn, free pawn. I'm thinking, is there like a knight c6, knight d5, knight e4? Any of the knights doing anything useful? Uh, yeah, so maybe there's like rook b8. Uh, I guess I'll have to play queen c3. And then knight e4 there is, is attacking some stuff. But uh, you know, it looks totally fine for, for white, I think. No real problems to solve. And, and an extra b pawn to boot. Yeah, it's. I would say it's a good position. Yeah, so we see knight f5 from from black. 
Uh, Maybe in 94 would be coming along soon, too? Yeah, expecting 94 in the last move, honestly. It's making me wonder if I can play a move like F3 here, uh. which uh, does weaken some dark squares, but I still have this dark squared bishop, and, and black is missing it, notably. And it does control the E4 square pretty well. Um... That being said, though, Benjamin Bach does need to start moving a little bit faster. Uh, he's getting getting down on the clock here, and that's not something that, that you really want. Uh, I know. He's <laughs> watching his games. Um, yeah, there, there are some decisions to be made, though, for sure. So it makes sense why he's spending the time here. But, uh, Maybe I could start protecting the B-pawn more. Ooh. So or queen d3 is his choice. So mm -hmm. this is also aimed at stepping out of knight e4, but it doesn't really commit to the move f3. Could black still play knight e4? Probably yes. Knight e4, I think simply a bishop e1 might, might be uh, Benjamin's plan here. And then f3 can kind of come with tempo. This bishop can come to f2 if ever need be. And uh, I, I would like that one, that one quite a bit for white, I think. Simply rook a2 instead. We do have a result. Draw. Yeah, so Ilya Nizhnik and Fabi's game does end in a draw. Uh, not quite in the exact manner we were predicting, but uh, you know, th this position was, was always just going yeah. to be pretty equal, I think. I, w I do want to take another look at this game. Uh, yeah, of course, this was the Berlin uh, between Ray Robson and Lenny A. Dominguez. And uh, this one looking, looking to be a draw. Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, I feel like Dominguez can keep pushing, but it's still, yeah, going to be a draw. Um, with that in mind, I think we're actually looking uh, like Wesley So is about to give a perpetual check against his opponent, Quesada Perez. And yeah. that one is, in fact, a, a draw by repetition as well. And so this is looking looking a little bit dangerous for us, actually. If all four of these games end in a draw, then they only need we will be. Half on, at the end. They will need uh, to get to eight. They'll need two points to get to eight and a half to win the match. They'll need one and a half to get to eight to draw the match, yeah. and we will have to win at least three to one in order to to win in that final round. So I don't know who do you think has better chances of winning then, Benjamin Bach. Uh, I think uh, I think I like his position the most. Actually, honestly, objectively, yes, he does. But um, with his time and yeah, w with his time and, and him being bored for this is honestly a lot of pressure to put on the guy. Yeah. But uh, I think he's our best chance here at leveling the score going into this final round. Just on the chessboard, yes. <laughs> Uh, so, of course, you can't play knight takes d6 because rook takes d4 is an issue. Um, but maybe there are some, some creative ways to get out of this. Oh, well, he does play knight takes d6. Rook takes d4? Uh, I thought rook takes d4 was, was the idea. Oh, uh, instead we see knight takes d6 and rook takes b2. And, okay, after rook b1, This maybe. I actually pretty like for whites. I mean... Yeah. No, I think... Uh, I don't really see any issues. White's still up the pawn, and there is this uh, rook b8 threat. Wait a uh, second. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Uh, what? Thank you. What? Is there... What? No, no, there shouldn't be. What? <laughs> I don't understand. Rook c1 is threatening checkmate. Uh, there's no perpetual check. Uh, white is up simply a queen for a rook here. Uh, like it, like checkmate is, is threatened on the board. It's not so easy to stop ah, either. Thank you, Benjamin. Uh, Don't lose on time, rook please. Yeah, rook takes Move. f2 is is strange. This is this is strange. All right. Well, this might be what we needed uh, to get back into this Hold match. Hold on, he still has a little time. I nah, want I want to watch he's got it. it. Easy win. Easy win. Easiest win of his life. Yeah. There's I would never love to. been an easier chess game. Just to announce, we do have another results. The other game was also ended in a draw. Yeah, Dominguez does end in a draw. So that's one and a half, one and a half so far in this round. And now 
uh, Benjamin Bach is looking to, to level the score for us going into the final round. Uh, sim simply up a queen for a rook. Of course, there are still tricks here. Well, the, the quick queen f3 is, is a nice move from Benjamin. Uh, I don't know if I would have have... I, just, I couldn't have played that, that move that quickly. That was really cool. I agree. Yeah. Guarding the h1 square for, from checkmate, but just the, the speed with which he played that move, it's, it's disturbing. And so now I think, actually, there is a threat. Uh, if a move like g4... Uh, tempting white to play queen f6, so you can play rook h1 mate. I think there's actually a fun tactic uh, rook c8. In, in rook c8, king h7, rook h8. Yeah. And then uh, there's, there's a nice checkmate there. Uh, where if king takes h8, you have queen takes f6 check, yep. and then forced mate on g7. So everything working out for Bach here. We do see rook c8, and a very quick d5. Uh, so he, he's guarding. Both of the rooks checkmating squares using his diagonal pieces, <laughs> and that's this is actually pretty nice. I like watching this. It's it's bishop d4. <laughs> <laughs> bishop d4 to guard ah. g1, and he does it. He's he's inter he's an entertainer at heart, I suppose. <laughs> uh, some some very funny business here. Could something like e5 that. work? Yeah, maybe it's time to stop being quite so funny, Benjamin, and and just just win the game. Just it's let's just call let's, let's win the game. What? Okay, so he's promoting. Okay, very fancy stuff. Well, he's promoting. He's also just playing bishop c5 and, and taking this this knight off the board. Okay. Wasn't there easier ways? Maybe, but I mean, I'm a big fan of, of playing the funniest moves in chess, and I think he he has definitely achieved that uh, here today. Should just be totally winning. Bishop b7 is nice. You keep the king out. Now d7 d8 is unstoppable. And a rook and a bishop should be enough to stop the cascade of pawns that, that black still has remaining. So we see f5, push, but now push, d7 push. and d8. The rook sacrifices okay. itself. And a rook and a bishop are enough. Uh, you see a check and another check, and then we pick up g5. The, the king is still completely cut off, and this one is over. Benjamin Bach up on time now, believe it or not. Whoa. And he wins by resignation. Some Whew. Very fancy stuff from this Benjamin was... there to win that game. Maybe yeah. be a little too fancy for, for my taste. But he got the job done. And uh, with that, the, the score is leveled 6-6 six to six coming into this final round between the St. Louis Archbishops and the Chicago Wind. Yeah, uh, this, is, this was definitely that one, one was of wild. those games. That was, that was wild. Uh, so with the score completely tied going into the final round, we need to score two and a half points to win the match. It's actually really important that you do win the match because you get ten bonus points added to your score uh, in the league standings. So eight to eight is, is not enough, really. You, you need eight and yeah. a half to, to make that difference. I feel like our guys can do it. I mean, especially in the last rounds, they usually pull through, and Fabi has... Um, I was going to say Fabi hasn't had any wins, but he won the, the the one before this one, didn't he? That seems like him. I yeah. think he's he's got two out of three so far. Um, yeah. Uh, who hasn't had wins? We need that guy to I win. think Dominguez has not had wins so far. I All could right. be could I, be wrong. I, I think, think the, he Dominguez right. is two draws and a loss. Yeah. Which is not so what we need from Borja. Dominguez, we need to win. Everybody else just draw. Yeah. Well, let's recap this last round really quickly first. Uh, yeah. We of course had Fabiano Caruana drawing his game against Ilya Nizhnik. Uh, Lenny and Dominguez drawing against Ray Robson, uh, Wesley So drawing against uh, Quesada Perez, and lastly Benjamin Bach wins his game on board four against Lazaro Bruzon Batista. Uh, yeah, and then those were here are the pairings for, for next round. So like board you were one, saying, board one, board one. Yeah, board one on board one, board two against board two, uh, and so on and so forth. So who do we need? Who do we need to win? Who do we expect Everybody. to win? Everybody, um, yeah. We 4 0 in the final <laughs> rounds last week. Let's see if we can do it again. But, I mean, objectively, I feel like our two guys, uh, boards of one and two, Fabi and Lanier, I feel like those would have um, their more objective wins because, especially mm -hmm. because they're both white and um, Fabi against Ray Robson, I feel like, like, Fabi has prepared so much against him just because of U.S. champs and other right. tournaments that, I mean, yeah, of course those two players have, have some history. Um, 
Yeah, I think Lenny A really needs to, to step up here. He only has uh, one point out of three so far in this match. And then I think on boards three and four, uh, I think Wesley is kind of our, our ace in the hole here. Uh, if we need him to pull through, I think Wesley uh, is a huge favorite against Bruzon Batista. And on board four, I think Benjamin Bach just needs to keep doing what he's been doing, stay solid, yeah, he uh, also, try not to give up a full point. He also played pretty solid this round, and he just paid off because his opponents made mistakes. And right. that's also like what I've been telling everybody, <laughs> the chess players, that like, you don't always necessarily need to do crazy stuff. You can just play nice moves, nice chess, and keep it solid. And if your opponent makes a mistake, well, perfect. If not, well, he deserves, I mean, the, the, the draw or the win. Right. Or that's like, yeah, I don't know. That's just the mentality that um, seems logical. But, yeah, hopefully this is, this is going to pull off. And um, our guys will win. But... It's, it was a pretty huge roller coaster. Yeah, th this last round definitely deciding a lot. Uh, by leveling the score going into the final rounds, uh, it's, it's really anybody's, anybody's match. Um, of course, we are favored, I think, on all four boards on this, this match, actually. Uh, yeah. All four of our boards are higher rated than all four of their boards, or, or well, their respective opponents. Um, so with four favorable matchups, hopefully we can end up with two and a half. But uh, they've, they've been playing very, very well so far today. And I think yeah, this, this game uh, with uh, Benjamin Bach that, that he just won against Batista is really the first sign of any huge blunders and mistakes that they've been making. Uh, other than that, yeah, it's, right. it's been very hard-fought games. And uh, they, they're very tenacious players so far. It's difficult to, uh, to score any wins. Yeah, um, yeah, it's... Yeah, I might just want them to this this game's to start. I'm kind of nervous. Yeah, I really want uh, to see how this follows ten, up. And tension is building. Yeah, this is. You see, I was kind of hoping they would have already won, like, uh, you know, some nice uh, previous games that we had. It was like, yeah, it's, we're going to last round. We only had like half a point. Or yeah, man. <laughs> in, in the first match, in the second match especially, we we yeah. both were were looking pretty strong going into this final rounds. But now yeah. with a level score, uh, these players are are up against the wall. They need to uh, to show their stuff. Yeah. Um, how are the how are the other teams doing in other in our division? So I think earlier today, uh, the Chess Bras had a, a pretty crushing victory against the Brazil Capybaras, mm -hmm. and then I didn't get a chance to see what the other scores in those matchups were, but that's the one really relevant to us, because the, the Canada Chess Bras are, uh, of course, the only team in our division uh, ahead of us right now, and the also only undefeated team in, in the division, uh, besides for us. So we definitely want to be keeping pace with them, and uh, we need to, to score a win here today in order to do so. Yeah, I think it's not too far out of reach to to go to um, to take a win. Yeah, but definitely. We just need to, to get a positive score in this, this final round here, and, and we'll be there. And I think we're almost ready to, to get underway. Looks like yeah. the chess.com people are starting up their stream. Oh, and they, they have a live replay of Wesley. Oh, no. So I'm so sad. It's Oh, oh and his yeah. face. Well, okay, we, we can't, yeah. We're talking about a stream Sorry. they can't see. But <laughs> Wesley, of course, with that horrible, horrible blunder in the first round, ends up losing losing a game quite early yeah. on. He has since recovered, though, I think, with some wins. Mm -hmm. And so in this final round, oh, we do have a game starting. Hopefully he can, Bobby uh, Ray pull it out for us. So we have another E4, E5 opening. And we're back on track for another Roy Lopez. Berlin? Uh, you don't think it's going to be Berlin? I, I think Dominguez has been the big Berlin player so far this match. So I think... Not Berlin. Nice. Just the classical Roy. And let's see. Okay. Some of these other games have gotten started yeah. as well. Let's see what's going on there. Looks like we have a Petra in one game. Not this game. Not that one, for sure. So this is our board wow, four against their for board Berlin. four. Nice. <laughs> nice. 
Uh, you got to do what you got to do on board <laughs> four, you know. Just, yeah. uh, Bach needs to trust in these 2,700 plus players on boards one through three that they're going to be able to score some points. Uh, it's his job as board four to really just walk away with, with a draw here. He's done more than enough this match, especially winning in that last round, to, to get us back to a level score. Now he needs to be solid and, and to let, let the, the professional Wesley So, <laughs> Fabi Caruana, Lenny Dominguez team really, really show their stuff. I think that's the way for I us. I mean, it's not the bad to, way to, to actually think about this for your teammates. Say, I like that. I like that mentality. Yeah, you're you doing know, your part, and then you trust that everybody else will do their part. There's, there's something comfortable about being on a team with Fabiano Caruana <laughs> and Wesley So and Lenny Dominguez. You know, you, there's a lot less pressure on you. Uh, especially when you've already scored such such a key win that, that Benjamin Bach Yeah, has. it was a pretty nice one, honestly. Yeah. Um, let's take a look at Wesley's game. It's also not the pressure if you were mentioning, I guess. No. <laughs> this one uh, seems to be boring. I'm bored. What's going on here? I thought barreling would be the boring one. Yeah, this, this one, this one, though, also not super interesting to, to my eyes. But, uh, yeah, Wesley plays c5. He's, he's trying to break down this center. Uh, expect White to play a move like e4 in the future. I think this is something he's he's aiming for. And it looks like Wesley's going to bring his bishop out on, onto the long diagonal as, as well to challenge this e4 square. Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's go for the Petrov one, because this is, I feel like if we, if we, we should give it about 10 moves before Something interesting is going on. I agree. But this Petrov game, let me tell you, I think this is one that's that's going to shape up to be a little bit more interesting. With opposite sides castling, and Dominguez looking to attack the king's side. Uh, take a pawn. Take with the pawn, fix the structure, yeah. or take with the queen. No, uh, take with the pawn. Your queen would can Ah, your queen could come to g2. It would be such a nice queen g2. But now this queen... I'm such a big fan of these queen g2s. Yeah, w without the pawn on e3, there's just a little bit more space for this queen to move around. And uh, the pawn on e3 might also become kind of a weakness, I, I think, with the rook coming to e8. Uh, so here we have a very interesting position where the sides, or the kings are on opposite sides, but also the bishops are on opposite colors, which is kind of a key feature of attacking positions. When you have these opposite colored bishops, uh, it's very important to have the safer king. And I think in this case, white is going to have, have that safer king. Uh, and with the abundance of f-pawns that white has, you can imagine a move like queen e4 forces a move like g6. Then we can start pushing these f-pawns to really break down the light squares around the king. And I think that's the way forward for Dominguez here. So play a move like queen e4, play a move like f4, and then after things like f5, you can start trying to, uh, to attack the king with more devastating effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but instead of queen e4, maybe something like already f4? Yeah, I like maybe starting with f4, or even starting with, with h4 if you can get away with it. I don't know if maybe... I, if you capture that pawn, I think there might be bishop h7 ideas. Uh, yeah, or like just rook g4 and you're going to bring the other rook. It shouldn't, yeah. do, it shouldn't work. Uh, so I like moves like f4 and, and h4, actually. And then uh, eventually, I think black is, is going to play the move g6, and we'll have that hook that we need to, to latch on to start opening up lines. So I think this yeah. one looks rather promising for, for Dominguez. Uh, who else do you want to take a look at? Uh, Fabi? Sure, we can look at Fabi's game. It's, it's another Roy Lopez, as we were talking about. And this one looks just as complicated as all the other Roy Lopez's that I've ever seen in my life. Uh, so g3 from Fabi keeps an eye on the f4 square. You can also play a move like king g2 soon to, to unpin this f pawn. And uh, with the black pawns in, in the center, I don't know, how do you maneuver your pieces here? I'm not super familiar. I think something like king h2 would be reasonable to king try H2. and push. Okay. F4, maybe? Uh, ideally? Hopefully? It, it seems like White's pieces are kind of stepping on each other's toes, though. Yeah, so how do you, like you how do you reorganize before you start like, breaking you, through? Yeah, because like, you can't really do something like D4, and you need something like D4 to open up. So that's why I was trying to like do something like B4 first, or something like F4, 
some something some stuff like that just to open more room for breathing. Okay. And then we could follow it ideally by something like D4. Like let's say King is to F4 and like you want to play something like D4. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I, I, I take the point, but um, I, I don't, it feels weird to be playing f4 while your yeah. pieces are still kind of jumbled up like this. I don't think he's quite ready to, to break through in, in that specific manner, but uh, I was thinking maybe you could just bring this knight to, to f3, maybe over to h2, and then after you've done that, I think I like f4 a lot more in, in that specific case. The knight on h2 looks a little bit weird. But uh, I, I think it's a, a lot better than the d2 square, where it's blocking off all of the white pieces. Yeah, uh, also I'd just like to point out like the time difference. Yeah, Fabi, of course, moving very, very quickly, <laughs> and, and Ray having himself a, a bit of a think here about what to do. Uh, definitely, that's, that's one reason to prefer, prefer the white pieces here, even just simply the clocks. Oh, wow. And yeah, rook f7 is, is his choice, simply king g2, uh, getting the king to a better square. And now Ray's going to pick up the pace a little bit. He, I think, has decided on his next few moves, kind of a, a plan of action here. So queen d7, I think, is telegraphing. Uh, rook a to f8 is probably next on the agenda. And uh, Ray is going to look to use this open f file to put some pressure on, on, t on this white king side. What about something like f4 now? If you take then d4. I really don't like playing f4 in in, <laughs> in this type of position where my knight's stuck on d2 and well, my, that's my the bishop's point. stuck behind it. If I it. get to play uh, f4, take d4, you move the bishop. And I play e5, you got to move the knight. Seems yeah. Like a... Yeah, it just seems so loose to, to, do, to do this with no pieces around my king. But... Uh, that's the beauty of it. You, oh, okay. You it. All right. Instead, we see knight b3 I uh, mean, hitting this bishop, and now queen e2. It was a little too um, magical to actually work. <laughs> it's just, it's so but scary. Yeah. I don't like being scared. Bishop e3. And so now the c5 uh, square is looking a little bit tender. Uh, Fabi's kind of daring Ray to play this move d4. And I'm not sure if it's any good or not. Um, yeah, d4, I... I, I I guess we're planning to, to capture that pawn. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe simply bishop d2. Uh, OK, this game certainly has a lot of chess left to be played. But uh, maybe there could be a nice c5 coming up. Yeah, I, I was saying the c5 or, score looks a little tender. But I was, yeah, I was but thinking like, d4 for black immediately is what Fabi is kind of daring here. And I wasn't sure how. The other thing that I was thinking was something like even a4 for white. So you start trying to open up that side. Right. Yeah, I think a4 makes, makes a lot of sense. So we see knight h7 from black uh, opens up the rooks along this f file. And now it's Fabi's turn to kind of make a decision. What does he want to do? So we see bishop c5. And I like this move a lot. So now d4 never comes with tempo. You never really want to capture this bishop because then the knight comes to c5, and it just makes black the black piece it makes the black pieces look a little bit awkward, especially with this rook on f8. Yes, I agree. I'm only thinking. Well, so if you don't want to take it, how can you continue? Are you going to play something like knight e7? Or so, rook d8? Yeah, rook, rook d8 is his choice. I don't think black really wanted to take it all. Because knight, knight on c5 hits the queen on d7, it hits the pawn on a6, it hits the pawn on e6. And then yeah. maybe your move a4 could, could come with a lot more, uh, lot more oomph uh, in coordination with this knight on c5. I have to ask, what does oomph mean? Oomph! It's like you know? power? Like, yeah, like power. Power is a good word for it. Have all these funny little words. More, more chutzpah, you know. Doesn't even feel American. <laughs> all right. Ah, okay. see, thank you. See, yeah, ah, so a four finally me. lands on the board. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like this move a lot. It, it does break down the queen side pretty effectively. Yeah, a four is just such a such a Rui Lopez move. Mm -hmm. Who? Okay. 
Up to you. Who do you want to see? Oh, let's take another look at Dominguez's game. This one, I Oops. think, is, is progressing. Wow. So I think it went pretty similar to the lines we were talking about, where black did end up playing g6. White went ahead with h4, h5, and started breaking down these light squares uh, using that pawn hook. And now I expect to see a move like f5 coming pretty quickly from white to take away these final defenders around the Black King. And I think it's a very natural plan that Dominguez has followed, and I think he's executed it well. Huh. And right now also he's not... I mean, he's still pretty down on time, but it's not at l half at least. Right, but yeah, I was gonna mention this this move from Black. I think is C5? is really really important, and I think it's uh, it's pretty good for him actually. So I think the idea is if White wants to continue uh, very naturally with the move like f5, now he's gonna get hit with c4, and this bishop's gonna have to leave this diagonal uh, from d3 to to h7. And I, I think if the bishop can't stand this diagonal, then these let these threats to the light squares become a lot less potent. So I'm not sure what Dominguez is planning to do about it. You, of course, can't play c4 yourself. Otherwise, queen takes b2 happens. Yep. And so he needs some way to, to kind of prevent this bishop from being uh, removed. But I'm not sure if such a way exists. I'm not sure if this. Ah, I was going to say that. I was thinking if I'm not sure if f5 works. Oh, that's the yeah. line I was so going with. So this is with. this is but pretty blatantly sacrificing a piece, right? Sort of. After yeah. c4, I mean, you're not planning to move the bishop. You're planning to take g6. That is and true. And so c4 takes g6, takes d3, takes f7, and well, the king the has been opened. Well, that's the thing. Maybe instead of taking f7, you can play queen h7, king f8, ah, okay. rook and c3. I still don't see it. I mean, so yeah, you can play uh, taking on f7, but queen f7, and how do you follow? Yeah. So Dominguez wastes no time. Let's see he's, how they... he's sacking this bishop. Uh, let's see what the follow-up is for him. Queen. I think I like just taking the pawn on f7. Ah. He agrees. Uh, probably king f7, I, I think. And then maybe just a move like rook d3. This is a scary. Well, wait, rook d3, there's there's queen h6 check to trade the queen, yeah. so I'm not so, so sure. So maybe queen h5 check, yeah, so queen if h5. king g8, then you take, but yeah, what if king f8? Then queen d5, maybe? Yeah, I think I like queen queen d5. I think this is this is his idea. Check, check, check. I mean, you have to give a check here. I don't think queen c7 is, is going to get the job done, simply rook e7, and then you have to yes. move the queen again. Um, yeah, it seems like queen h5 should be it. Um, just looking here, maybe maybe f4 is is the other move being considered. Ah, you're blocking um, queen h6 check. Yes. And that also you would be. Um, but what if something like f4 and I want to say rook e2. Rook e2. Well, they, maybe then then a, a queen h5 could come. King I don't f8, know. then rook d3. Yeah, it's actually, well, queen f4. It's difficult. It's difficult. I'm not so sure this peace sacrifice was what we needed from, from Dominguez here, especially now that he's, a after the sacrifice, he's spending all his time. Uh, that That's yeah. never good to see. Uh, so maybe there's something he's seeing now that he doesn't quite like. But, uh, this game really does, worries me. Uh, Let's I think look at he has to... Uh, Play some more moves. Uh, How is Wesley So doing? Huh. Mm, I think this is actually pretty. I think this one is looking a okay for the Grandmaster I with a cat avatar. Uh, yes, yeah, C four. Wow. Uh, so this is this is asking some questions. I, I I'm 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 thinking this would most likely. Uh, I mean, it really depends how it proceeds. But if you do manage to get like the a4 and c3, both of them, right, and it should be good enough to, you know, get some stuff done. To, to play for a win, you mean? Yeah. Uh, I I kind of agree. the The question is, 
can Black keep enough pawns on the board while mm -hmm. he's trying to run around and, and capture all of these these white pawns to, to really keep winning chances alive? And I think that's going to be the, the tough part here. Uh, so of course, there's moves like Rook takes a4 to consider. Things like Knight e4 check and Knight takes c3 are also yep. on the cards. But uh, Black will have to try to do all this without letting the white rooks get too active on the 7th rank and without giving up really... I think if you give up the a5 pawn, it becomes a lot more difficult to, to win. Yeah, I agree. So something like rook b5 maybe? So knight e4, king g2, rook a4. Maybe something like that would be... Yeah, this, that, that seems like an, a, a reasonable way to go. And then there's ideas of playing rook b7 check and, and knight g5. Uh, could cause some problems for for black actually, but that being said, it's kind of double edged. The okay, black could also, looks pretty cool, actually. could also invade. So we see rook takes c three. What if rook b five? Just knight a four. Rook b five. I think maybe knight e four could be black's idea. I think after knight e four, you are making some pretty serious threats of of checkmating that white king. Yeah, I'd just like to point out that um, that's eight seconds. This these times really, really, really scare me, when, especially when your opponent has like <laughs> minutes. Wow. So yeah, I think we should stay on this Fabi yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. I think so. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> because um, eight seconds to five minutes is a lot, and and Fabi seems to be going after after this Kang once again. So what's going on here? How can we how can we kill him? I think queen h7 does does the job. The idea is bishop g6, and then you're just checkmated. Huh. I don't really see how to stop. Maybe knight e7? I think queen h7, you have to play queen g8. Is that... Maybe, maybe knight e7, actually, I don't know. 97, 97 doesn't feel right. It feels like something should should be wrong there. This is just me guessing, but. Anyways, I think queen h7 should be played, and maybe just let the opponents figure out where to go. Yeah. Uh, all right, I'm gonna cheat now. Nice. Yeah, queen queen h7 was plus two. This move is only like plus one, but now uh, I mean, obviously black isn't going to be playing very accurately either. Apparently, the best move by far is rook f2. Huh. Never would have guessed. But uh, Fabi is doing doing uh, quite, quite well here. This one should be good for, for us. It looks like, though I will say, there's time pressure in a couple other games. Very notably, Benjamin Bach is down to his final 20 seconds. I but, can't stop uh, staring at this game. Yeah. All right, let's move to another game. Okay, so Benjamin Bach down to 20 seconds in this position. Looks not pressured, but I don't know. I don't think this is actually. Yeah, not not the easiest position actually for for Benjamin here. Uh, so yeah, we see knight d4, and I think the big problem here is. White can play c3 to remove this knight from d4, but, but, but black is going to struggle to play the move c6 yeah. um, due to this pressure of the pawn on, on b5. So yeah, there we do actually see c3 come into play. And maybe black will try to remove this knight uh, with something like knight f4 here. I think I like this move knight f4 to, to really try and get rid of this knight before it's a problem. Benjamin Bach disagrees, though. Not a lot of time to think about it. So simply rook d f7. Hold on. So if instead of rook f7, he would have played king g8, he would be um, repeat. Oh, Fabi won. Fabi won. Nice. So we are expecting Ooh. this. Uh, so that we just need brings, us to, else brings us to plus to one. Yeah, we just need Don't three draws, <laughs> and, and the round is ours. The round and the match. I am a little worried about this game, honestly. Lenin here. Well, Lening. I have some great news. We should check back in on Wesley So's game, because things have gone well for him. Whoa. Remember that pawn on a5 Whoa. that we said he needed to keep to have winning chances? The pawn on a5 is now on a2. It's a, 
baby queen. And well, that's a kind of a queen. It's 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 a, a queen. Middle, it's a middle aged queen, honestly. <laughs> it's young adults nearing nearing <laughs> full queendom uh, on A two. It's it's gonna come to A one, and that'll be six that'll be five. Oh. Okay, can so you F6, queen? So F six. Surely you can queen here, right? Well, uh, what's the, the king runs to b8, and and there's no more checks. Uh, so you you queen, rookie seven check, king d8, uh, knight f7 check, king c8. Wait a second. Don't my don't get mated. No, I think that's a draw if you queen here. Right. Uh, oh well, knight f7 check. I have. No, that's a draw. King c8, knight d6. If king b8, rook b7, bye bye. So yeah. So don't queen here, Wesley, because that would be bad. Um, Maybe I knight think e4. Though, yeah, knight e4 should, should get the job done. Because if rook e7, king d8, knight f7, king c8, knight, there is no, no more knight d6. Right. Knight Even d6 knight, is, is covered. Even if you want to be mean, maybe knight b5 works too. <laughs> knight b5 also covering <laughs> the square. Not a bad choice. Wesley really taking his time here. I I'm sure he sees the threat of Rookie yeah. 7, and he's just finding, making sure the move like knight e4, or move like knight b5, really gets the job done. Ah. And he, he does play knight okay. b4, or knight e4 now. And now he will be queening with little, uh, little complications. Queen. 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 Oh. There it is. All right, and now the rook and the queen together will checkmate the white king before the pawn on the f7 can even dream of being more. Okay, official. We so, won. yeah, also, Wesley uh, wins his Benjamin game. Drew. Uh, Benjamin draws his game, so, bringing us to the required eight and a half uh, points. Archbishops are the winners. Uh, nothing, this, this last game doesn't matter. Uh, well, it does matter, <laughs> but... We already won. We already won. It doesn't won. matter in the team results, I guess. Correct. Yeah. Eight and a half is enough to win the match. And those top two boards really getting it done. And Benjamin Bach, a superb board for drawing his Oof. match, uh, brings us oh, uh, to, uh, to the final score Oh, we unfortunately did lose in this game. Yeah. Dominguez just got checkmated in Rook and Bishop uh, against Rook. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. We win eight and a half to seven and a half. Archbishops yes. are the winners of this match. They get those 10 extra points for winning the match added to their total score in the division. Uh, we did so have a pretty um, good scare. Yeah, until this, this was by far the, the closest match of the year so far. Yeah. The, Chicago, the Chicago Wind really uh, putting some pressure on the Archbishops here. We were, we were behind up until uh, this final round here when yeah, we were on yeah, level footing again. It was not really fun to uh, keep. Well, it was it was suspenseful to be sure. Definitely some some excitement yeah, it here. It was. Oh, well, all that matters is we won, eighteen and a half to seven. All right. Yeah. Uh, so be yeah. sure to to join us next week. I don't. Are you going to be here next week? Uh, still undecided. It's Possibly join us next week. <laughs> Definitely join me next week uh, when we're going to be covering week four. I believe our next opponent is the California Unicorns. Uh, a tough opponent to be sure. But I, I think I like the Archbishop's chances against anybody in the league. Yes, yeah, me too. I mean, we got Fabi, we got Wesley, we got Dominguez, we got so many sweet players. Such yeah. I don't even know how many. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think by far we're, we're always going to have the yeah. highest average rating no matter who we're up against. Yeah, this, this was a this was, um, very good wrap-up. Uh, it was very nice to see we win. Yeah, so congratulations to this Archbishop's team. Thank you. Uh, winning, winning the match, yeah, congratulations <laughs> to you as well, Doris, I suppose. Uh, winning the match, eight and a half to seven and a half. Uh, and I guess that's it for, for us today. Thank you so much yeah. for joining us. And we will see you, we'll, we will see you next week. This has been a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club.